morning. I am Colonel Wesley Fong, United States Army Retired. And on behalf of the CDIDU Society, I would like to welcome and thank you for joining us on this very auspicious occasion, the 8th Annual Veterans Appreciation Ceremony, honoring our society's World War II veterans. I believe we're the only Chinese society in Hawaii that recognizes all of its veterans. You know, we're Americans. We are Americans regardless of what village, what city, or what province in China we find our roots. As Americans, we live in a democracy, a democracy where we can enjoy our liberty and freedoms, freedoms we often take for granted. It is these freedoms that often we, as members of the armed forces, put our lives down for the sake of our community and for our nation. Today we're going to be paying a special tribute to the members of the Sudai Du Society veterans who served in World War II, the 32 of them. And we will be presenting them with the Congressional Gold Medal. The Congressional Gold Medal is the highest civilian award given by the U.S. Congress. At this time, I'm going to call upon Yeoman Second Class Robert Ching, United States Navy, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And we were supposed to have had Dr. Juanita Liu to sing the Pledge, I'm sorry, the National Anthem, uh, except uh, I think she got a little stage fright. No, she, she got, unfortunately she got sick. But we will be hearing from her because we do have her recorded. You will hear her beautiful voice singing the Star Spangled Banner. So at this time, will all of you please rise? They served because they wanted to serve. 
And about 25% of the Chinese Americans in the United States came to Nepal. And as a matter of fact, that was the largest ethnic community that came to Nepal throughout the United States during World War II. They served despite the Chinese Exclusionary Act. And that particular act prohibited Chinese of ethnic origin from becoming United States citizens. But in spite of that, our Chinese American veterans who served, served without any recourse and without any remorse. Believe it or not, two years later, after the world, uh, attack on Pearl Harbor, that particular act was repealed. And did you know that out of all of the 20,000 Chinese Americans who served, 40% of them were not even American citizens. These veterans took it upon themselves to serve, to protect and preserve our freedoms and also our liberties for future generations. And as part of that future generation, we are forever indebted to them. Now you may be wondering, what is a veteran? A veteran, well, there is a definition in the dictionary you can find. But to us in uniform, a veteran, and the true meaning of a veteran, is an individual regardless of branch of service, whether active duty, reserve, or National Guard, he or she at one point of his or her life wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America up to and including his or her life. Being a veteran is not something that you can just buy. It has to be earned and it can never be taken away. It really has no monetary value, but at the same time, it is a priceless, priceless gift. At this time, I'll have Kevin Chun, president of CDIDU, to give his opening remarks. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Kevin. I'm the president of CIDU. I'm the president of CIDU. I just want to welcome everybody to CIDU's great hall for this uh, this event or the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal to the awardees of our society. Um, I just want to say that uh, I would like to thank all the awardees and the families for the sacrifices they made for the country, the, the United States of America. And thank you for all your sacrifices, you and your family's sacrifices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. At this time, Major General Robert Lee, United States Army retired, and the chair of the Hawaii Congressional Gold Medal Committee will be giving his congratulatory remarks virtually on the big screen. You will be followed by Pamela Young, the Emmy Willing journalist and producer, who will narrate, serve with pride, the road to the Congressional Gold Medal. I want to congratulate our Chinese American World War II veterans on your award of the Congressional Gold Medal. This medal depicts that Chinese American World War II veterans served in every service, fought in all campaigns, and fought on land sea and air. Many of you were not American citizens, but you all served proudly as Americans. This recognition is such a rare honor because you are remarkable American patriots, because it is so well deserved, and because it finally sets things right. Stand tall, Chinese American World War II veterans, you have joined the ranks of other distinguished recipients of the highest award that Congress can bestow on behalf of the American people. You are now in the same company as George Washington, Ulysses Grant, Douglas MacArthur, Dwight Eisenhower, 
as well as other special units like the Navajo Code Talkers, the Tuskegee Airmen, the Nisei and Filipino soldiers, all distinguished recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal. I have been involved with previous Congressional Gold Medal awards and many worked hard to pass the law that awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to Chinese American veterans of World War II. From my view, the Chinese American Citizens Alliance made this award and recognition possible. My special thanks go to past National President Ed Gore for starting the recognition effort and guiding all the steps necessary until passage. Congratulations to all recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal. It's hard to believe that nearly eight decades have passed since that fateful morning on December 7th, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked. Aloha, I'm Pamela Young. More than 16 million Americans served in our armed forces during World War II. For Chinese Americans, the story of their service to our country was nearly forgotten. Their stories of heroism and sacrifice are only now being told and recognized by a grateful nation. The Chinese-American military experience began during the American Civil War of 1861 to 1865. A small number of Chinese served in the Union and Confederate forces during the bloody conflict on American soil. During World War I, Chinese Americans enlisted in the United States Army to fight in the European War. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there. By late 1918, the doughboys of the American Expeditionary Force engaged the enemy. Chinese American soldiers distinguished themselves on the battlefields of France. By mid 1930s, Chinese Americans were about to enter a new kind of war. This is the Battle of China. This the fearful beginning of a new kind of war. This the first mass bombing from the air of a helpless civilian population. The Japanese invasion of China seemed unstoppable. Chinese Americans stepped up as volunteers to fight the Japanese forces and to help save a desperate China. America was preparing for the winds of war as it enacted its first peacetime draft in October 1940. For the first time in our history, we began mobilizing an army while still at peace. In Chinatown, the rush is just as great and enthusiastic as elsewhere. Chinese-American draftees were among the first. The Hawaiian Islands, one of the most strategic American military sites, now became the target of aggression as the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked America was now at war. The first island battle in the Pacific was fought at Wake Island.
From December 8th to the 23rd, civilians aided the Marine and Naval personnel against overwhelming Japanese forces, which eventually forced them to capitulate. 64 Chinese-American civilian contractors were captured and sent to prison camp for the duration of the war. 22 of these men were from Hawaii. After the decisive victory of the Battle of Midway, American forces began its offensive against Germany and Japan. Chinese-American personnel were now engaged in combat operations around the world. They fought at Guadalcanal, the China-Burma-India theater, from North Africa to Sicily, from the Normandy invasion to the German Rhineland, from the Pacific to the Mediterranean and European theater of operations. Chinese-Americans helped to defeat our enemies on all fronts. Up to 20,000 Chinese Americans served in World War II, in spite of the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. One out of every five Chinese in America served their country. They served in every branch of service. The Army, the Army Air Forces, the Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, and Merchant Marines. For the first time, Chinese-American women enlisted in the United States military. The small but significant number of Chinese-American women in uniform helped to break the racial and gender barriers. They were assigned to a variety of stateside duties, and some were sent overseas. Two Chinese-American women flew with the Women's Air Force service pilots. Women on the home front stepped up as war workers at aircraft factories and naval shipyards. They served as Red Cross volunteers and also created the first Chinese USO canteen for servicemen. With the defeat of Germany and Japan, World War II was finally over. The men and women in uniform returned home Utilizing the GI Bill and their veteran status, they ultimately helped to establish a modern, vibrant, post-war Chinese community. With the advent of the 75th anniversary of the ending of World War II, an idea for congressional recognition for our Chinese-American veterans began with the efforts of the Chinese-American Citizens Alliance. They led the way for the idea of a congressional medal for our veterans, it was to become a reality. You know, when I started this journey with Chinese American Citizens Alliance back in 2016, we knew really the time was against us with the aging World War II veterans. We really wanted to give our World War II veterans a final honor. We had to start locating the families and survivors to get as many signed up as possible. You know, one of the goals uh, of this project was to get the children and grandchildren involved to really see that they had made a great sacrifice for this country. Throughout their lives, many Chinese dedicated themselves to prove that we are as patriotic as any other groups who served in the military. We wanted the medal to depict that Chinese American veterans served in every theater of war and fought on air, land, and sea. Additionally, we wanted to recognize Chinese American women that served during World War II. Well, the common occupation was a nurse found in the Army, Army Air Force, and the United States Navy. Although 40% of the veterans could not be citizens, they were proud to serve as Americans. The Congressional Gold Medal is the highest award given by Congress to civilian individuals or groups, and what it really means to veterans as well as the families is final recognition for all the contributions made by Chinese Americans in the U.S. Armed Services. We also remember the Chinese Americans who gave their lives in service to our country. Francis B. Y., Captain, 34th Infantry Regiment, United States Army. Captain Y. is the only Chinese American recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hua Kao Kong, Lieutenant, 353rd Fighter Squadron, United States Army, Air Force. Harold K. Lee, Corporal, 60th Infantry Regiment, United States Army. David G. Lem, Lieutenant, 499th Bomb Squadron, United States Army Air Force. 
civil war is a time that tries the souls of men and women. And World War II was a time when every patriotic soul was needed. America's 20,000 Chinese American veterans were there, and they stood for America and earned today's thanks, the thanks of a grateful nation. And so, to you, America's Chinese Americans veterans, thank you and God bless you. And God bless as well the nation that stands today because on a dangerous yesterday, America's veterans, including America's Chinese American veterans, stood for her. Thank you. speakers talk about the Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans of World War II and how prestigious an award it is and how hard it was to get the legislation to pass it. And that's all true. In fact, the Congressional Gold Medal is one of the top three medals that the U.S. government can give. The other two are the Gold Me the Medal of Honor and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So it's a great company to get. Congressional Gold Medal. But I'm here to talk about the medal itself, not the history of it, not how prestigious it is, the medal itself. How many times have you been shown a medal and you look at it and you say, well, what's that on it? Why is it on it? And what does it mean? Well, I hope to spend a few minutes with you now so that you can get a better understanding about this Congressional Gold Medal that you're about to receive. Here it is, the Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans of World War II. It is three inches in diameter, it is one quarter of an inch thick, and it weighs six ounces, almost half a pound. To put this in perspective of something else you might know and be familiar with, let's compare the size of it to the Eisenhower Silver Dollar. The Congressional Gold Medal is twice the diameter of the Eisenhower Silver Dollar, and it weighs six times the amount. So it is a large and heavy metal. So when you get it today, handle it with care, and don't let it fall on your foot. The Congressional Gold Medal is not a cookie cutter metal. They're all different. The Congressional Gold Medal that was prepared and, and designed to honor George Washington, or the Tuskegee Airmen, or Ulysses Grant, is not the same one that you have before you today. They are all unique, and they are all custom designed. 
I, as well as Major General Lee and Mr. Edgar, were privileged to be on the design committee for this medal. We worked for about seven months in 2019 with various artists and sculptors to come up with this medal and its design. So if you let me, I'd like to spend a few minutes to tell you what we intended to put on the medal and why. On the front of the medal, we wanted to show that the Chinese American veterans of World War II fought in every service of the United States. So to do that, what you'll see on the front are seven Chinese American figures. Six men and one woman. They are all wearing their World War II uniforms in the Army, in the Army Air Forces, in the Marines, in the Navy, in the Coast Guard, and the Merchant Marine. And on the right side, there is the one woman, and she is in her Army Nurse Corps uniform. On the reverse side of the medal, we wanted to show that Chinese American veterans of World War II fought in all theaters of war, in the Pacific and in Asia, as well as the Atlantic and the uh, Europe and the North African campaign, as well as the fact that they fought and served on land, sea, and air. So to show that they had been working and served on land, sea, and air, we decided to select certain military equipment that they used in the land, on the land, at sea, and in the air. So for the land component, we selected the Sherman tank. Now why do we select the Sherman tank? The Sherman tank was a tank that was introduced in World War II and was used extensively in both the Pacific and in Europe. For air, we selected the P-40 Warhawk fighter aircraft. So why did we select that one? For you history buffs out there, you will know that the P-40 Warhawk was the fighter aircraft used by the famous Flying Tigers who flew out of Kunming, China against the Japanese. And this P-40 Warhawk has, well, has one of the most iconic images of World War II. I'm talking about the shark's mouth and the shark's teeth that were painted on each of their aircraft uh, noses. So when you get the medal today, take a look at it. The workmanship is exquisite, and you'll see the shark's mouth and the shark's teeth on this P-40 aircraft. For the sea, we selected the battleship Missouri. The battleship Missouri was the ship upon which decks the Japanese surrendered to the Allies in Tokyo Bay in September 1945 through a tube, General Douglas MacArthur, to end World War II. So that's why we selected the battleship Missouri. What else can I tell you about this Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans of World War II? Well, they call it the Congressional Gold Medal. But is it really gold? What do you think? The last time I checked, gold was $1,500 an ounce. And if you have six ounces per metal, there's a fortune right on that table right now. The answer to the question is yes and no. There is one, count it, one Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans that is struck in gold. It is designed to be entrusted to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. For, for the Smithsonian to make a display and put it on public display in the future. So in the future, if you go to Washington, go to probably the American History Museum and you will see the gold version of the Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans. But for all you that are receiving it today, it's not gold, but it is solid bronze. And I think you'll be happy with it. So the other thing I'm asked sometimes about this medal is, well, where's it made? Is it made in um, 
was made by Lee's engraving in Itaewon, Seoul, Korea? Or is it made by Wong's coin shop in Shanghai, China? The answer is no. It is made here in the United States of America, and it's made by the United States Mint. The same people that brought you and bring you your nickels and your dimes and your quarters. So in closing, I hope the past few minutes have given you a better idea and understanding about the Congressional Gold Medal for Chinese American veterans of World War II. And I sincerely hope a better appreciation for it when you receive it in a few minutes. Congratulations to the Chinese American veterans of World War II. Thank you. The C. Daidu Society has identified 32 members who have been registered with the Chinese American Citizens Alliance to receive the Congressional Gold Medal. They have distinguished themselves with service to this country during World War II. They made up the strength of this nation and as a result are now part of the greatest generation. Our society is proud to conduct a roll call to recognize each of these military members who served in the armed forces of the United States. The first six names that I will call are still living, although they could not be here today. After that, each name will be read for our departed members who could not have lived long enough to receive this medal personally today. Followed by a ringing of the bell in their honor, acknowledging them for their service to, to a grateful nation. They are Jensen Tsai Lun He, Staff Sergeant, United States Army, age 94. Harold Hung Pui Lok, Sergeant, United States Army, age 94. Edwin Yu Hing Ao, Private First Class, United States Army Air Force, age 95. William Hong Kong Blum, Staff Sergeant, United States Army. He is also a CDIU Society past president, age 95. Clifford Yatbao Wong, Sergeant, United States Army, age 95. Walter Wachu Ching, Technician Second Class, United States Navy, age 99. Our roll call continues with veterans that have departed. Edward Gum Hong Ao, Technical Sergeant, United States Army. Albert Gum Tim Ao, Technical Sergeant, United States Navy and United States Army. Henry Hua Hong Ao, Private First Class, United States Army. Richard Yit Tong Char, Sergeant, United States Army. Alvin Kampat Ching, Private First Class, United States Army. Kelvin Yen Loy Ching, Private First Class, United States Army. Lawrence Kun Chung Ching, Master Sergeant, United States Army. Richard Wang Yin Ching, Master Sergeant, United States Army. Wa Kang Ching, Technical Sergeant 5, United States Army. Dr. Herbert Yao Hoi Chin, Captain, United States Army.
He was also a CDI Du Society past president. Charles Yu Kong Chun, Corporal, United States Army. Nicholas Yu Fo Chun, Sergeant, United States Army Air Force. Richard King Yao Chun, Technician 5, United States Army and United States Navy. Dr. Edmund Tai Kam Ng, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army. He is also a past Cedai Lu Society President. Peter Siu Ki In, Corporal, United States Army Air Force. Kim, Kenneth Kim Kam, Sergeant, United States Army. Wally Wa Hong Leong, Sergeant, United States Army. Albert Jan Ing Lum, First Lieutenant, United States Army. James Sao Kyung Tam, Sergeant, United States Army. Hing Yi Tong, Technical Sergeant, United States Army. Cyril Bung Yan Wong, Technical Sergeant for United States Army. Edward Sun Duck Wong, Sergeant, United States Army. Robert Sun Ung Wong, Corporal, United States Navy and United States Army. Thomas Tai Pung Yim, Technical Sergeant 5, United States Army. He was a Cedai Du Society past president also. Charles Pok Ung Yang, Technical Sergeant 5, United States Army. Melton Wahu Yuen, Sergeant, United States Army. This completes the roll call. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to have the families of 15 Congressional Gold Medal recipients here to receive the medal for them. Presenting the medal will be Major General Stephen Tom, assisted by Captain Tin Min Ching. As I announce the name of the recipient, will the family member or members please come forward? We will begin with the presenting of the Congressional Gold Medals to the wives of the recipients who are here today. There are Richard Hua Nick Ching, Master Sergeant, United States Army. Representing him will be his wife, Shirley Ching, his daughter, Gwen Wong, and his son-in-law, Arthur Wong. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Richard Hua Yit Ching. James Sao Kyung Tam, Sergeant, United States Army. Representing him will be his wife, Xu Win Tam, and his daughter, Anna Tam Chung. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to James Sao Kyung Tan. Congratulations. Sun Ung Wong, Corporal, United States Navy, United States Army. He is represented by his wife, Miji Wong, son, Rodney Wong, and daughter, Maria Rao. 
On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Robert Wall. Congratulations. Henry Wahong Ao, Private First Class, United States Army. He is represented by his daughter, Sandy Ao Fong, and his son-in-law, Marvin Fong. On behalf of the United States Congress, from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Henry Ao. Congratulations. Represented by his son, Alvin Char. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Richard Char. Congratulations. And from a grateful nation, this congressional gold medal is presented to Charles Chun. Congratulations. Richard Heng Yao Chan, Technician 5, United States Army, United States Navy. He is re represented by daughter Valerie Chan Urima. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Richard Chan. Edmund Tai Kam Ng, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army. He is represented by his niece, Vivian Liu. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Edwin Ng. Edwin.
Nicholas Yu Fo Chan, Sergeant, United States Army Air Force. He is represented by his daughter, Claire Chun, and his son, Randall Chun. Good morning. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to veteran Nicholas Chun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Peter Siu Ki In, Corporal, United States Army Air Force. He is represented by his son, Dr. Kenneth In, and his daughter, Marjorie In Francis. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a very foundation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Richard Kenneth. Congratulations. Wally Hua Hong Leong, Sergeant, United States Army. He is represented by his son, Leonard Leong. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this congressional medal is presented to Wally Leong. Congratulations. Apologies to the Inn family, it's um, Peter Inn. Edward Sundak Wong, Sergeant, United States Army. He is represented by his daughter, Beverly Wong, and his son, Greg Wong. It's a real pleasure to give this to you. Um, on behalf of the United States Congress, and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Edward. Congratulations. Melvin Wahoo Yuen, Sergeant, United States Army. He is represented by his niece, Linda Lau. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to Melvin Yuen. Congratulations. Ping Yi Tong, Technical Sergeant, United States Army. He is represented by his son, Dr. Douglas Tong. On behalf of the United States Congress and from a grateful nation, this Congressional Gold Medal is presented to veteran Ping Yi Tong. Congratulations. In behalf of the Sea Dine Society and the United, the United States of America, to all our members who earned the Congressional Gold Medal, we thank you for your service.
How about another big round of applause for our recipients, the CDI New Gold Medal, Congressional Gold Medal recipients from CDI New. A big round of applause. the acknowledgement and he will be followed by uh, Dr. Liu and Dr. Liu is supposed to be standing here and she's going to sing God Bless America but the trooper that she is she did have it on video I hope the video will come out uh, it's her husband's that's sitting there if it doesn't come out it's going to be his fault <laughs> and so she'll be singing God Bless America and you can be seated for that Uh, in behalf of the CDI Do Veterans Appreciation Committee and the Kaupong Veterans of, of the American Legion, we'd like to acknowledge President Kevin Chun, Kevin, uh, for the use of the Great Hall. We really appreciate that. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Arnold B. retired. Uh, Dr. Douglas Tom. Doug. Uh, this is Beverly, Ms. Beverly Wong, standing there, she's doing the photography. Uh, and Dr. Of course, Juanita Ching, the uh, new, who's uh, going to be singing the uh, Godless America. I'd like to also thank uh, Mrs. Florence Ao, the better half of Colonel Baldwin Ao. And of course, the great MC, our retired Colonel Wesley Fong. And finally, all the volunteers who spent countless hours in preparation for the most memorable event, especially the, the committee led by Major General retired Steve Tong. Thank you very much.
to see that in society, we want to thank them and we salute them. In closing, there was a Vietnamese refugee who after being sworn in as an American citizen, once said, America, one flag, one language, and one nation under God. God bless our veterans, God bless their families, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, good afternoon. Thank you.